Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Kitchen Design Experts. We're the channel that tells you everything you need to know about kitchens, about bedrooms and about home offices. Now today we're going to be talking about kitchen wall cladding, or you might call them splashbacks or upstands, and how they compare to wall tiles. Right then, let's start with a little bit of a history lesson as we usually do. Uh, if I take you back to the early 2000s, at that moment in time, most of the kitchens that we fit, the walls would have been tiled. But at that point, we started to introduce wall cladding, different types of wall cladding. There was laminate, there was quartz and granite, and there was glass. Uh, and basically, that has now taken over completely. In fact, over the past six to seven years, I cannot remember a kitchen that we have fit that we've actually tiled the walls afterwards. It's all been some form of wall cladding. Now, what do I mean by wall cladding? Now, basically, this display I'm stood in here has an example of a laminate wall cladding. What you can see here is that the worktop finish runs up the wall. It gives you a continuous look and one of the big advantages over wall cladding versus wall tiling is obviously there's no grout which means that cleaning the walls is so much easier. I mean if you can imagine and it used to happen to me an awful lot around the hob area if you splash some tomato up onto the wall it got into the grout you spend ages with a toothbrush trying to clean it off but obviously with this that surface is just as white clean as this surface because it's a continuation. The other big plus point is when you do a good quality wall cladding, at the bottom the actual panel sits into a metal trough. Now if you look here, you can just about see this metal trough running along the bottom and that creates a perfect seal down to the worktop. So unlike tiles where you used to have cork running down onto the worktop. I mean, most people, if you look behind your sink at the cork where tiles used to be sealed down to it, it'd be filthy, all black and mildew gathering, which you don't get with this sort of finish. The good quality panels will be about 16 millimeters thick. So if you look at that there, that's a 16 millimeter thick panel. And that's what this is. And the metal trough at the bottom is U-shaped and it will actually, the actual panel will sit into that metal trough so there's no chance of any water ingression getting into the panel, even behind the sink. So it's a perfect seal, it's very neat and it makes it very simple to clean. Now one thing you have to be aware of with laminate splashbacks, behind the hob, especially if it's a gas hob, you have to be a little bit careful. Because if you can imagine with a gas hob, you put a pan on the back burner and the flame will lick up the side of the pan and it can get quite close to the wall and laminate isn't completely heat proof. So usually behind a hob, be it ceramic or, or indeed gas, we transform the laminate splashback to a glass splashback. This particular glass splashback has been done in the same colour as the kitchen door. Now this is heat resistant glass so there's no problem with either gas hobs or induction hobs or any ceramic type of hob. And the, what we tend to do again, which it, it gives you an eye towards the quality of the job, is that that glass panel is bonded onto a material so it makes it the same thickness as the laminate wall cladding, 16 millimetres thick. So again, the metal trough at the bottom can continue and run underneath the glass as well as the laminate. It's a very neat finish. I think it looks great because you've not introduced another colour, you've already got a floor tile to choose, a door to choose, a worktop to choose, you've kept it quite simple by putting the same colour on the wall as on the worktop. It ticks lots of boxes and I think you can see why laminate splashbacks have rather taken over from wall tiling. I'm going to take you around the corner now and we're going to look at some accessories that you can actually fit into laminate wall cladding. Right then, here we are with yet another laminate splashback. This one's in a more anthracite colour and again you can see that it's an anthracite worktop that then comes up the wall. It's still got the metal trough at the bottom which acts as the seal but in addition to that here you might see there's a line 
grooved into the actual splashback. Now this is an accessory track. You can see from this here that there are different accessories that you simply hook into that track. Uh, the types of accessories that you can have, well, th there's various ones. I mean, that's obviously for herbs. Uh, that's meant to take a kitchen roll. You can get them for iPads. You can get knife blocks. Uh, you can get herb gardens. Uh, there's many different things that you can hang on there. And they are very attractive and what's more, very, very useful because it keeps your top clear. And they're, they're quite adaptable as well because if you don't like the position of something, you can always move it somewhere else. And the accessory tracks are something that we fit into an awful lot of our kitchens. Now the two examples of laminate splashbacks that I've shown you, the actual splashbacks have matched the worktop colour. Now we don't always do that. Sometimes we pick out a different colour completely to the worktop. And if you look up here, you can see on the wall, this, this is wall cladding again, and we've picked out a highlight colour which actually matches quite a lot of the accessories that got on this display. Again, it's a splashback. Again, it lines up with this splashback. It means you don't have to paint your wall or tile your wall, but you can introduce different colours as accent colours within your kitchen. OK, we're going to move away from laminate now and onto a glass splashback. OK, right then. Now, this complete wall right up to a much higher height because there's no wall cupboards is clad in white glass now this glass is still sitting as you can see in the metal trough at the bottom so you've still got a very easy clean waterproof seal to the work surface but because this particular piece of glass has gone higher we've actually installed two accessory tracks in this one you can actually see here that we've got a herb garden there this is actually a knife box, and when it shuts, it just makes an attractive black finish. And over here, we've got another box, which has got spice racks in it, and these are actually spice jars. So you can see it's a very versatile, flexible system. Now, when it comes to glass, obviously you can get lots of different colours, but there's other things you can do with the track. You'll see here that just above the track, we've got an illuminated band that runs right across. And that, in a kitchen, can give an absolutely amazing effect, especially if you turn all the other lights off and you've got a light band going there, maybe even one underneath the worktop there. Looks absolutely fantastic. When it's glass, you might think, well, what do we do about the sockets? No problem at all. The glass can be made, cut out for the sockets. And indeed, in this particular display, that cooker hood is actually bored through the glass to hold it to the, to the wall. So as long as we know where the holes are meant to be, be they double sockets, light switches, or even boring for a cooker hood, it's absolutely no problem. Glass doesn't restrict you at all, and it can make an absolutely amazing feature in your kitchen. Okay, we're going to move over now onto quartz and granite to show you exactly what that looks like when we come to clad the walls. Okay, we've stood at a display now that shows you an example of quartz worktops. Uh, it could be granite, it could be granite quite easily, it's the same sort of material. And as you can see, what we've done on this display is we've run the quartz right up the wall. Now, I have to say that this isn't actually typical. Usually when we do quartz worktops, we will run the quartz up behind the hob, up to the cooker hood, because obviously you've got splashes and spills going on the wall. But generally, everywhere else, the quartz might only come up about 100, 150 millimetres. It's more of an upstand than an actual wall cladding, perhaps. Uh, the sockets then will be above the quartz, but if we do run the quartz all the way up, we can still cut it out for sockets, etc. I've got to say one of the reasons for not running the quartz all the way up the wall is a cost element, because quartz is quite an expensive product, and obviously the more of it that there is, the more it's going to cost you. And when we actually run it up as an upstand, what we usually do the height of that upstand is dictated by the height of your window sill. Uh, usually you've got about that much distance between the top of the worktop and your window sill. And that's what governs the height of the upstand. So we bring the upstand up to the bottom of the window and then we run it all the way around the kitchen, except behind the hob, of course. And what we also tend to do is once we've run the upstand up to the bottom of the window, we'll then actually put a piece of quartz on the sill itself. So it looks like the quartz wraps up and goes over onto the sill. Unlike with the laminate splashbacks, there's no metal trough at the bottom, there is a silicon bead in there, so in some respects 
it's not quite as hygienic perhaps as the laminate with the metal seal but quite frankly it's a very heavy product the seal is almost perfect and it's an awful lot better than tiles with a run of cork at the bottom finally I just want to go over to our Corian display and show you what you can do with Corian when it comes to cladding a wall right finally I'm studying a beautiful pink and black display Yes, I know, it, it was a great idea at the time, but uh, at least it stands out in the window and people can see it quite vividly as they drive past. But on this display, we've actually got an example of our Corian worktop. Now, Corian is a very expensive way of putting a work surface onto a kitchen, but it has lots of inherent values that we find very useful indeed. One of them relates to the way that it can curve up the wall. Here, there is absolutely no joint whatsoever. It will curl up the wall. It's actually concave, so it's very easy to clean. In this instance, we've actually run glass down to the top of this Corian upstand, but it would just be as easy to take the Corian all the way up to the top underside, sorry, of the wall cupboard. Uh, yes, we can uh, bore it out for sockets, light switches. Uh, we can still hang accessory rails on it but it's such a neat way of finishing the actual wall. That's it as far as wall cladding in kitchens are concerned. There are other methods, and as I say right at the beginning, I did mention wall tiles. And although we very rarely use them now, there are some instances when they actually look right. And we're talking now more about the traditional farmhouse style of kitchen, perhaps. Uh, yes, you've got the inherent problem still of the grout and the silicon at the bottom but if it's a look that you want then tiles still have a role to play but their role for us anyway has diminished considerably over the last 20 years or so that's it about kitchen wall cladding today thank you very much indeed for joining us obviously subscribe if you want to see more of our videos and if you have any comments whatsoever please bang them in the comments box below we'd love to get back to you thanks for your time bye bye